is Dr. Brian Thomas. I'm here at the Institute for Creation Research Discovery Center, and we're in the corner of the Discovery Center that has the current research. And the reason we have uh, man or myth in the corner of the current research is because there's a constant supply of new and improved and refuted missing links. Uh, the reason this is important is because um, the number one most persuasive um, icon or argument for evolution in general, according to our polls, seems to be human evolution in particular. So when people see this uh, parade of ape becoming walking more erect, turning into man, people see that and they go, oh, that must be how it really went down. Apes became humans over millions of years, according to evolution. And then they look at the Bible and go, this says God created Adam and that we descended from Adam. Well, this is wrong because evolution has proven that we came from apes, not from Adam. Well, here at the Institute for Creation Research, we've done the hard work of investigating each of those um, um, candidate fossils. And what we found over the years, of, over the 50 years that we've been doing this, is that every one of these candidate missing link fossil forms fits into three categories. None of those categories is actual missing link. The first category we find is just extinct animals, extinct animals. And uh, so we've got on display the actual to scale size of the most famous um, supposed human ancestor, the very ape-like Lucy found in Africa. In fact, it's so ape-like, it was just an ape. Uh, ape's got, Lucy's got the jo uh, ape jaw, Lucy's got ape arms, ape fingers, ape ribs, uh, everything is ape-like, except for this knee, but the knee was found hundreds of feet lower and um, in, uh, in um, a th a thousand, thousands of feet farther away from the rest of the skeleton. So the, the human-like knee didn't even come from the, same, uh, from the same creature. So anyway, Lucy looks like an extinct animal, an extinct ape. And so just because we slap a name on it that's called Australopithecus afarensis, does that mean, ah, oh, big word, I have to get rid of Genesis? Uh, no, because I can reduce it to a small word, dead ape, <laughs> extinct animal. It's just a dead ape. And so that doesn't mean I need to get rid of Genesis because God said he created apes. Genesis uh, doesn't say apes, but it says he created each creature, and apes are a creature, according to its kind. So this is an extinct kind, a kind that went extinct. Uh, evolution needs kinds to become out of nothing and not go extinct. So this is showing death, not the generation of new kinds, which is what evolution needs. Anyway, that's the first category, extinct animal varieties. And so there's lots that fall into that, um, lots of other examples. But then there's extinct people. Like uh, this was an example of a Neanderthal man. And the picture we found here was um, commercially available, so it's kind of there. But if I were to do it, uh, make up my own Neanderthal man, I'd put a suit on him and give him a shave. And he'd be walking around and he'd look, he would look like a lot of people that still look like Neanderthal today. In fact, even today, we have people that have Neanderthal genes, uh, genetic sequences, because Neanderthal man was just a man. And we talked about the current research aspect of this origins issue. Uh, just, uh, just last week, a new paper was published in the journal of Science saying that they found Neanderthal remains with fish bones, saying that, ah, these guys went fishing and they ate all kinds of creatures and, and plants and animals. They, they buried their dead on purpose. They were people. And so the idea that they were primitive, unga bunga, couldn't speak words, hunter gatherers, that's just all fantasy. Um, the facts now show that they were fishermen and that they intermarried with modern um, looking people. So that's just an extinct people group. Descendants of Adam, descendants of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and um, just like you and me. So, so am I supposed to go back to Genesis and say, oh, we can't trust Genesis because there's some people groups that went extinct? No, it's, uh, it's to be expected based on the um, the extinctions of all these nations that happened that were re recorded in the Bible, um, and um, and the curse of death on all of creation that started in Genesis three, and um, Romans chapter eight explains even more. So that's the second category. First category was extinct animals. Next category is extinct people or humans. So it's either animals like apes 
for humans, that leaves Genesis perfectly intact. And then the third category is just junky science. And into this category, we put creatures like um, Piltdown Man, where they had, um, boy, this thing was supposed to be the missing link for 40 years. Um, it turns out it was a fraud, and someone had manufactured body parts, stuck them together, and other experts. Multiple guys got their PhDs studying this thing, this one fossil, Piltdown, and um, it turns out it was a fraud in the end. But uh, the fraud did its job, didn't it? Because now we have generations of people who, who, who take evolution and human evolution for granted uh, because of this, and they, they never got the message, the memo that came out 40 years after the fact, that this was just a fraud. So uh, fraudulent science or bad science or wishful thinking uh, imposed onto these fossils, that's not, um, that's not good science. So here at the Institute for Creation Research, we want to do good science, and we're happy to report that after investigating each of these fossil finds and the new ones that come out, we found that they just always fit into these three categories, animal, man, or junk. And none of those categories challenges Genesis or the Bible, but um, there's no bona fide evidence that supports human evolution from the fossils because every one missing link that one guy says Hey, that's our ancestor. Another evolutionist says, no, it wasn't. So there's controversy on every single one of these contested bones. Well, we appreciate you uh, spending time with us here at the Institute and at the Discovery Center. We want you to keep us in mind as you, if you like this video, share it, of course, make some comments below, and then of course, consider donating uh, to us at the Institute for Creation Research. Thanks everybody.